church planting as being enabling God to, or being part of, allowing a new church to emerge, being part of that process, being open to what the Spirit is doing and joining in with it. Well, I think it's really important because whilst there's some great churches out there at the moment, not all of our churches culturally connect to where people in our community, people in our society are now. So therefore, as we begin to engage with people and talk about faith, we've got to let new things emerge that fit where they're at. I mean, for me, it's like the the old wineskins and the new wineskins. There's nothing wrong with the old wineskins. But people who are beginning to engage with faith and engage with God for the first time need something new and something that's relevant for them. And that feels like they need something different. So if they're new wine, we need new wineskins, different ways of being church that engage with those people. I just love seeing people's lives transformed. I love meeting new people, so that's always a privilege. And then I love journeying with people and seeing their lives change as they begin to get involved with a community of other people who are exploring faith, many for the first time, and seeing how that grows into something new and exciting. I mean, it's like I'm a parent and it's sort of like having a new baby. It's kind of exciting. It's, it can be difficult and a bit messy, but watching a child go from a baby and begin to learn things, that's what it's like being involved in a new church. It's like it's a bit messy and, and difficult and maybe it doesn't go by the book, but you begin to see this, this group of people grow in faith and become transformed and that's just amazing. Well I felt like I had a call from God back in January 2008 when I was in a meeting when we were asked to pray for a new area of housing and I felt like God called me to move into that area of housing and I kind of knew through this sense of calling that a church would start but I equally felt that God was saying don't go out and proactively plant the church but rather love bless and serve the community make friends with the people around you so we moved me and my family moved to the new community and we began to just unconditionally love bless and serve people knew I was a Christian knew I was um, serving them in that way and, and kind of I don't know about for that reason, but that that was part of my motivation because I was a Christian. And as we began to love, serve and bless people, they began to talk to me about faith and we spoke to them about that. And through a whole variety of different ways of connecting, we got to the stage where they asked if we would start a church, if they could come to a church that, that we started. And so feeling like that seemed to be of God, we opened our home and began to meet with, to start with a couple of families and then that gradually began, began to grow and we grew out of our home. People came to faith and were baptised in a paddling pool in our back garden and then we moved uh, into bigger places to carry on growing and uh, we meet in the community centre now. Gosh, we've learned loads of things. Um, one is that whole thing around we don't proactively church plant, God emerges churches in the same way that we don't make people Christians. That's something that God does. That church is emerging is, is something that God does. And so what I've learned is that the call on our lives is to unconditionally bless people. The call on our lives is to be friends with people. So Jesus said, I call you friends. And that getting alongside people and loving them and blessing them, that enables us to be in a place where we can have conversations about faith if that's what people want and it seems in the people that I've met I've discovered that far more people are interested in talking about faith than I imagined and that as we therefore journey and talk to people churches will emerge people will come to faith and through coming to faith they will want to meet in a way that is culturally relevant for them I think we've tended to see 
church in its broadest sense, those people that we mix with during the week and those people that we gather with on the Sunday as being something for us, for me. Actually, I think that Jesus says that we need to lay down our life. And that means that we maybe need to move out of our comfort zone where I go to a church that serves my needs to wondering how does God want to meet with people in our society and our communities through me? And that might mean laying down a whole load of things about church that we like. It might mean laying down a great worship band and great sung worship because that might not be where the people you mix with are at or you might start a, a new church, a new way of being church together and you haven't got very many people and so you haven't got that big worship experience. It might be that what you like to do is to be very quiet before God and very reverent and yet God leads you to share faith with maybe a very chaotic group of people um, who aren't used to listening and being quiet, maybe people who want to talk all the time. So I think we need to perhaps go on a journey from what meets my spiritual needs to how can I join in with the mission of God and lay my life down to enable other people to find out about God. Then how do we begin to get involved? So we begin to get involved by connecting with the people that God has given you connections with. People who you might be at work with, you might be at a toddler group with them, you might be in a running club with them, there might be people that you meet in the coffee shop. I don't know who these people are, but whoever it is that God's um, led you to, who you hang out with, what might church look like for them? So I think, first of all, you're getting alongside them, you're investing a bit in time in getting to know them and loving them. Whatever they think about faith, this isn't about making them your project, but just about allowing God's love to flow through you to them. It's about, say, committing to praying for them. Lord, is there things going on in these people's lives that you want me to be aware of or to be open to? If it's a geographical thing, if it's your local neighbourhood, you might want a prayer walk around it. Or you might want to um, just name the people before God when you're quietly praying and say... Is there something that you want me to say to them? Is there some kind of prophetic word? And if that sounds grand, just is there something you want me to share with those people? So it's all of that of preparing the ground and then asking God to make you aware of where is your spirit at work here? What are you trying to draw my attention to? And being just open to God's discernment and then not being afraid to move the conversation on so if you do I don't know if you are doing something with people and and issues of faith come up but actually not being scared of saying oh that's interesting that you're you're talking about that or you're thinking about that is that something that's on your mind or maybe saying is that something we could you'd like to talk more about or maybe you're in a, a situation this maybe a toddler group or something um, where you're getting to know mums and those people just saying Asking openly and with no agenda, would you be interested in your kids finding out a bit more about faith? Or would you be interested in finding out a bit more about faith? If so, what would that look like for you? And actually being genuinely open, not imposing your ideas, but being genuinely open to what they say. So they might say, yeah, we'd like that. Maybe we could stay after toddler group and have lunch together and maybe look at a Bible story together. So being open to that, that it might not be something that emerges on a Sunday at 11 o'clock. I'm bringing other Christians with you along the way because uh, the Bible talks about sending us out in pairs. It's not necessarily things we can do on our own. The conversations might start on our own and then you might start thinking, well, who is it that God's drawing to my attention who might want to join in with this? So be open to him. I would just say that my experience is that God has done more than I could ask or even imagine. And as we step out on this journey and we pray and we're open to God's word, and we look out for that discernment, who knows what God might do in your life. Mm -hmm.